Filipino-inspired brunch in Seaside. You can actually smell the cinnamon. Sicilian seafood delights in Monterey. Get the mussels every time. They're non-negotiable. And rustic pizzas in the heart of Carmel Valley. You get a beer and a nosh. Just ahead on a special Monterey Bay Area edition of Check, Please. Oh. I love lumpia. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to a very special edition of Check, Please! Bay Area. Today, we're venturing down the coast to explore a whole new culinary region for our show, the scenic Monterey Bay Area. We have three guests, and each one recommends one of their favorite spots, and the other two go check them out to see what they think. Joining me at the Check, Please! table today are behavior analyst Peter Alter, high school baseball coach Travis Elder, and administrative assistant Kim Lemmy. Welcome, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Kim's up first. Her go-to brunch spot offers all the American classics. Cinnamon rolls, pancakes, omelets, you name it. But now she's expanding her horizons with the Filipino and Pacific Islander-inspired specialties the owners serve up daily. Located in Seaside, it's the Butter House. I'm Benny, I'm the owner, it's my wife, Susan. <laughs> The vibe when you enter the Butter House is supposed to be open, dynamic, and friendly to every single person that walks in, with a little wow factor. There you go. And the reason why we decided to open up a breakfast restaurant is that we came from the bar scene. We were originally bartenders, and instead of giving people the hangover, we wanted to cure the hangover. Instead of going to bed at 4 a.m., we wanted to wake up at 4 a.m. Yes. We describe our food as American classics with Pacific Islander and Filipino flair. Benny absolutely loves breakfast. Breakfast is it's my favorite yeah. meal. And lunch is my favorite meal. Mm -hmm. So our menu is completely available from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Like, so I can get my fried chicken sandwich, and he can get his scramble whatever way he wants. Yeah, there you go. Enjoy. There's things that I crave, and, and lumpia is always something that comes around for the holidays. And lumpia is one of the things that we got taught as we were kids. Get to about right there, fold the insides in. The recipe has been in the family for over 90 years, and uh, that's kind of where it all started with my grandma. While Benny takes care of the savory, I'm a big fan of sweets on the menu. Always good to see you, brother. The Butter House, on average, sees anybody from six months old all the way up into their 90s. It's fantastic to see a beautiful circle of life that walks through our doors with every creed, yeah. nationality, religion. It doesn't matter. It's just home. Yeah. What makes us happy, what makes this worth it, is when I see them get something and they do a little dance. Yeah, the shimmy. They do a little shimmy dance when the food comes and they're like, oh, yes, and they yeah. eat it and they're so happy. That's everything to us. Yeah. All right, Kim, you are a breakfast and brunch lover? Yes. Okay. My favorite meal of the day, my favorite meal to eat, my favorite meal to cook. Really? Yes. What, is, what is your specialty at home? My scrambled eggs with cheese. Okay. I okay. hear that they're the best from <laughs> friends and family alike. All right, um, own it, own it. Yes, That's absolutely. Right. So what makes the Butter House comparable to your kitchen? The Butter House has a wonderful feel. It's a neighborhood restaurant. They have a great eclectic menu, so there's always something to find for somebody else to eat. So I usually have these chicken and waffles. It's one of my favorite. The chicken is usually fried crispy, it's juicy, it's tender, and the waffle's always crispy on the outside and nice and meaty on the inside. They serve it warm with some warm syrup on the side. It's just a great way to start the day. All right, Travis, what did you have? Did you go for breakfast or lunch? Breakfast, there's so many options, so many good options. I had the Santa Maria tri-tip sandwich. It comes with a fried egg and chimichurri. I'm a sucker for anything with chimichurri on it. It was very good. Thinly sliced tri-tip, a nice little salad on top, arugula, little greens on top with a perfectly fried egg on toasted butter, sourdough bread, mm -hmm. so good. And what about you, Peter? So we got things rolling with Olympia, and they came out piping hot. You break open the little egg roll, and it's filled with beef and rice. Yeah. It's an appetizer for breakfast, which you don't usually get, and it's right. wonderful. Right, it's totally true. Yeah, and it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's and the then, best lumpia I've ever had. It is, yeah. absolutely. Is it really? Best lumpia yeah. I've ever you had. You had lumpia too? I did, oh yeah, it's, you have to. Yeah. I was so inspired, I actually bought 
a T-shirt that has <laughs> that says Lumpia's on it with the Friends it. logo, and yeah. I've never gone to a restaurant and bought a T-shirt. This is so delicious. I need a shirt to represent how much I like this food. And then they were amazing. They were amazing. And Do you get I, them regularly? <laughs> that was actually the first time we had them. Oh, man. oh because you're exploring kind of the Filipino side. Of exactly. Yeah. yeah. And the sweet chili the sauce. sauce. I, you oh. know, it was the adobo for me. The adobo the adobo sauce. The, 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 the chili sauce for me. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. That sweet chili sauce. Yeah. I put yeah. that on anything. Uh -huh. that, I, that was absolutely perfect with it and just delicious yep. to counterbalance it. Okay, and you said you started with the lumpias. Yes. So then, then where did you go from there? Marciana's fried rice, which is this big bowl of butter fried rice topped with eggs and a choice of meat. I had the Spam. Mm. I mean, it's grilled, it's crispy, it's sweet. You break the egg and the yolk pours into the rice and it's just this savory thing and it just keeps going. It looks like not that big a bowl and halfway in you're like, there's still a half a bowl of rice in here. <laughs> and it is absolutely wonderful. We tried the lemon curd blueberry pancakes this time. Mm -hmm. uh, the lemon curd on top was perfect. Just enough, not too tart. Fresh blueberries on top, didn't even need syrup. One right. more thing about the pancake though, mm -hmm. and I didn't order it, but I saw them going by. These things are huge. I yes. mean, we're talking the whole plate <laughs> is a pancake. You are getting a pancake. Yeah. It is yeah. the pan, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're fluffy and just oh. wonderful. We had the fried rice for the table, the pork belly fried rice. Again, you're at a Filipino place. I mean, yeah. pork belly pork. marinated in adobo. We kept the adobo sauce from the lumpia and poured a little bit more on top of it. So good. I mean, we went across the board on, on the menu. It was really great. Mm -hmm. So my wife regards herself as a BLT aficionado. Oh, okay. She did the BLT with avocado and everything was wonderful. The only tiny miss was it was a little dry, could have used a little more mayo, but mm. you know, that's coming from someone who regards themselves as an aficionado, so <laughs> still excellent. And those country potatoes, I thought, are delicious. Yeah. It's not an afterthought. The sides aren't yeah. an afterthought. I don't think anything there is an afterthought. You can taste the love that the owners, that the, that the kitchen, that everybody puts into that. There's a vibe when you're in there. It's just a great place to be. And what do you get to drink? It's a Guatemalan coffee. Yeah. Again, it, it's to your point, everything's done just, yep. just up a yep. little bit. and. This deep, rich, dark Guatemalan coffee and strong. Yeah. Two degrees hotter than it, than it needed to be, but not, <laughs> like in a good way. They weren't going to serve you cold coffee. They were bringing yeah. you hot, piping hot coffee. Yeah, you'd rather have it that way I'm than the other way. Exactly. We had a Bloody Mary and. Was it spicy? Uh, they asked you if you wanted it spicy. Mm -hmm. uh, I got it. I didn't want to burn my palate out right before I got there, so I went with a little spicy. Their bar is inventive. Yeah. I, I had the, the Pog Thai, which okay. is their version of a Mai Thai, Pog being passion fruit, orange, and guava. And right, then, which is a famous Filipino drink. Uh, yeah, with a couple different rums in there and wonderfully inventive. I don't think we talked about those cinnamon rolls. OMG. <laughs> okay. I was just going to say. It's the size of a softball. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Warm. Talk to the baseball coach right. over here. Comes out warm. <laughs> so when you cut it, you can actually smell the cinnamon coming up from it. Okay. It's thick, thick layer of frosting, but it's not overly sweet. Right. And then at the bottom, the brown sugar and cinnamon caramelized, mm. and it, so there's this crunchy crust kind of at mm. the bottom. It's just amazing. It's a wonderful way to end a meal. Or start one. Or start, start one. one. <laughs> All right, so would you go back again? Totally. Absolutely. Yeah. You bought a shirt. I bought a t-shirt. <laughs> I bought the shirt. <laughs> I have so. I love lupias. <laughs> All right, if you would like to try the Butter House, it's located on Fremont Boulevard in Seaside, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $25. Our Monterey culinary tour wouldn't be complete without a trip to the waterfront for the fresh catch of the day. Travis's favorite seafood spot is run by a Sicilian-American family with roots dating back to the heyday of the sardine fishing industry. Located on historic Fisherman's Wharf in Monterey, it's Cafe Fina. The restaurant name is Cafe Fina, and I named it after Josephina, my mother. Both my mother and father are Sicilian. My father and his four brothers came to Monterey because there were sardines. Not knowing how beautiful Monterey was, it was just about fish. You cook what you know how to do best. Coming from a fisherman family, you know, I mean, Dominic, Mercurio, <laughs> we eat fish, we eat pasta. 
the main things that we serve that are popular, you know, the clam chowder, crab, a new pasta dish called pasta gianna, named after my granddaughter, which is chopped meat, mozzarella cheese, throw it in the pizza oven and let it melt. This is a true Italian pizza. With the wood-fired oven, you gotta have a dark crust. I want the bubbles to be burnt. I make my own vinegar. I love doing things like that. But this is a propeller shaft that we had cut. We keep it white hot and voila. Our desserts are all made here. Cannolis are standard in the Sicilian community and it's always a treat at Christmas. My grandmother would make the shells. We use a whole milk ricotta with a couple of secret ingredients. It's the best. We've been here a long time. We've had Joe DiMaggio here, John Madden, Mario Andretti. I mean, I can go on and on, the wall's full. John Madden was sort of special. John always liked to sit in the same place because he could sort of hide in the corner. I always had a plaque on the table that said, this table is reserved for John Madden. If he arrives while you're here, we may ask you to move to another table. It's the least desirable table. It's right next to the kitchen, it's close to the wall, but that sort of made it a little funnier. There's something here that makes the people come back. When you see the same people that have been coming here for 30 years, it's a good feeling. All right, Travis, there are a lot of seafood restaurants in Monterey and on the wharf. Now, what is it about Cafe Fina that brings you back time and time again? Well, if you're coming to Monterey, you gotta do seafood. Right. If you're doing seafood, it's gotta be Italian seafood. And in Monterey, if it's Italian seafood, it really should be Sicilian seafood. There's a huge Sicilian American community that dates back to the early 20th century. Yeah. And this place really hits all those marks plus just the environment, the ambiance, and the people there are fantastic. Yeah. What do you start with? The, the appetizer menu, you could go there just for appetizers. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah. We get the mussels every time. I said they're non-negotiable. They come in this little tin pot. They're black Mediterranean mussels that are cooked in a white wine tomato sauce. The broth that comes on top of them, they cook them just to perfection right till they open up. You're not taking that tin away until all of that sauce is mopped up. Bread, napkin, t-shirt sleeve, whatever you got, uh, <laughs> mop it up because it is just the best every time. And I love mussels. Okay. I'm a mussels girl. All right. The mussels were plump and juicy and they were all open and they were all big and fat. Just oh. so tasty. And for our table, even the folks who didn't necessarily eat the mussels, sopped up that tomato that, sauce. Oh, that broth. You could have just drank it. Yeah. Mm. They need time. to bottle it and put it in a jar <laughs> yes. and sell it. Yeah. In Monterey, down on the water, it's required. You got to do calamari. Yeah. Um, that's another staple when you're down there. And it's buttery on the inside, crispy on the outside. Hit it with a little lemon and sea salt on top. It's such a good way to start a meal. And now we're mussels and calamari in, and it's like, oh, we're, we're going to order a couple more? <laughs> okay, let's see how this goes but every time. So did you order more appetizers? We did. We had crab cakes. Okay, okay yeah. Oh. How are they? Fried to perfection, crispy on the outside, loaded with crab on the inside. They were warm and meaty, and we would go back for those. They just were for the crab cakes. Just for yeah. the crab Crab cakes and mussels and the bread, I'm done. <laughs> you still got three more courses to go. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Yeah. <laughs> so we got the artichoke, and obviously Castroville is the artichoke center Capital of the world. Of the world. Right. Capital of the world. Right. And you got the fresh produce from Salinas Valley just right there. Yes, and it's so good. It's steamed and then chilled, and then they fan out the leaves like a flower, and then in the center you get the artichoke heart with this sauce of aioli. Right. It is absolutely scrumptious, but a little lighter. Talk a little bit about what you drank with it. Started with Bloody Mary. Mm -hmm. The server was like, I just yeah. made this Bloody Mary for you. It Here had it to is. be Roxanne. She's the bartender. It, she is the bartender. Yeah. That's it. So, you know, ask how hot do you want it? Yeah. You know, it's that good. It was, you know, savory and salty and everything you want in a cocktail. I get a Dom's Negroni every time. Ooh, uh, Dom's Negroni, Negroni. <laughs> good Negroni. You're eating at a Sicilian restaurant, mm -hmm. come on. <laughs> for an entree, I went with the mixed seafood grill, swordfish, prawns, calamari and salmon cooked in his wood fire grill. The wood grill gives the fish this different type of consistency. It's like a crispy outside, but perfectly done on the inside with a little bit of smoke. It's almond wood that comes from Dominic's ranch. The first wood fire grill, wood fire pizza oven in Monterey. I had the mixed grill as well. And, oh. and, and you know what I think it really speaks to the skill of the chefs is to prepare a whole different number of fishes 
all together and not dry them out mm -hmm. and you get the salmon flavor, you get the calamari flavor, yeah. it's so good. With a little orzo salad, hit it with a little lemon mm -hmm. on top. Yeah, so we had the crab. Mm -hmm. oh, so good. It's a beautiful presentation, yeah. and it has about 10 or 12 legs. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So it makes it very simple to eat. You don't have to pull apart the crab. Okay. The meat was succulent and sweet. The legs were nice and thick, so you got nice pieces of crab. It comes, with, of course, with some nice warm butter and some lemon on the side, so that was really good. We had the pistachio pesto. Yes. Isn't that good? Oh, my goodness. That was our favorite dish, yeah. to be honest. With prawns? Yes. I would never have thought to order pistachio pesto, but it was <laughs> so good. And then, of course, you have the bread to dip the yeah. pesto sauce. And the prawns were cooked perfect. They were sweet and plump. And the little pistachio in it for a little crunch, that was just really good. We really enjoyed that. And the pizzas. I, I'm telling you, you could go just for the pizzas. There's five or six different kinds cooked in a wood fire oven. How can you beat it? Great dough. Dominic's got a couple secrets from some Sicilian guys he knows about the dough to make it nice. From the Sicilian guys. <laughs> He's got a couple secrets. <laughs> it's the fillets cut long ways. Oh. You guys, did you, did you both meet Dom? He's, yeah. he's a character. He's fantastic. Yeah. It, it's Fisherman's Wharf. It can feel sometimes a little fancy, but you're, it feels like you're in somebody's house. Absolutely. You feel like you went over to a friend's house for dinner. Yeah, service was impeccable. Okay. It was a beautiful mixture of being taken care of but not being hovered over. Yes. Okay, now dessert. Mm. <laughs> I am a sucker for the dessert tray. Yeah. I mean, I'm here, again, I'm here for the show. Yeah. yeah. And I had the cannoli. And okay, <laughs> now we're back to Sicily. Now yeah, we're right? back right? to Sicily. Exactly. Yeah. You know, that sweet ricotta filling of the cannoli and the crust on the outside and just those little chalk chips, and it finishes perfectly. The original is a brulee iron. And then the creme brulee was just amazing. It had a beautiful crunch on top, the candy top, and then the creme brulee on the side was just so creamy and so delicious. So that's how we ended our meal. A lot of good dessert. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. All right, there's you need options. to go back. Oh, absolutely. There is a rumor on the East Coast that there's no good Italian food here, and I would be wow. thrilled to take any of my East Coast relatives and say, try this. Yeah, there you go. I think you're team one. The quintessential, <laughs> the quintessential Monterey Italian restaurant. Yes. All right, if you would like to try Cafe Fina, it's located on Fisherman's Wharf in Monterey, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $40. Peter's Place is well off the beaten path, nestled amongst the ranches and orchards east of Carmel. It's a rustic, slightly quirky spot, offering an equally eclectic menu of locally sourced foods and organic wines. Tucked away in Carmel Valley, it's Corkscrew Cafe. When people come to the Corkscrew, they feel transported. So I designed and built the restaurant to be in the spirit of my childhood experiences back home in Belgium and France. What I tell him is, you're in Europe without the jet lag. My wife is a big factor in the menu. We've decided to have a very modest, simple menu, not pretentious. We're bringing some traditional thing like the French onion soup, which is part of my childhood. Our fish tacos. We made the tortillas with blue corn that we shipped from Mexico. We've got the ladies in the back making it. You can't get it any better than that. We have trees at the vineyard as well as on our property where we harvest persimmons, apples, pears, tomatoes, and so on. And so we bring that into the mix. Beautiful. We have a wood-fired pizza oven cooked in the fire. So you get that smokiness, the texture, the crunch, all those factors. So Sylvia, my wife, came up with the Meyer lemon pizza. And it's been the most popular pizza we have. It's the ingredients that kind of takes you into a couple of different culinary sensory worlds, if you will, of the acidity to protein. Check it out. It is the, the perfect pizza. So what are you drinking? I was born just towards the end of World War II, and we had to evacuate, and my mother gave birth to me, actually, in a wine cellar. And so I was raised as a child drinking beer and drinking wine as well. So it's a food for me. And that's how I consume it, and that's how I make it. And people come here not only to be fed with the food, but to be fed with the setting and the feeling of the space. Are you in heaven? And that gives us a lot of pleasure. 
And plus, that's who we are. Now, Peter, people have come to Carmel, this idyllic kind of Carmel by the sea, you know, and you get that lovely image of the ocean. But you picked a spot that's a little more tucked away, huh? It, absolutely. You have Carmel by the sea, and it's adjacent to Pebble Beach, and it's the quaint European village. And so maybe people visiting don't know that you drive 12 miles east, and you happen upon this amazing little village, this little community that really captures some of the old California, the ranches and the orchards that California was, but it's also now it's a winery, which kind of represents what California is now. And I just think it's a wonderful place. Yeah. And what does Corkscrew Cafe do so well? <laughs> sure. Well, I think it is their attention to detail. It's inventive with a real focus on, is it delicious? Yeah, it's delicious. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. You know, we always start with the baked garlic that they serve with a goat cheese. And, you know, when you hear garlic and you, you think of the raw and it's got a bite. And yeah. when you roast it, it mellows all that out. Mm -hmm. And that plus the goat cheese that's kind of salty and tangy, it's just an amazing way to start. And what about you, Kim? We loved the garden. We got there and it was a beautiful sunny day in the valley. And so we did the beet salad. Mm -hmm. It was the golden beets and the red beets, some goat cheese, a couple of slices of grapefruit. Amazing, so good. The beets were sweet, nicely firm. The arugula had a nice little vinaigrette to not overbear it. It just all came really together. Right. Yeah. It was a rainy day when I actually went there one, you know, one of the one rainy days in, in Carmel Valley, but that's okay because they had French onion soup on the menu <laughs> and it was perfect. I felt like Ernest Hemingway in the little, you know, brick area. Yeah. Oh. And the French onion soup was delicious. Oh, mm. nice. So you have to try the Meyer lemon pizza. Wood-fired oven, thin crust, so you get a little bitterness from the arugula, mm -hmm. the saltiness of the prosciutto, and then the Meyer lemon is a little bit sweet, a little mm -hmm. bit Sour. It's a little bit of everything. And the and shaved parm right on oh, top mm -hmm. brings it all parm. together. Yes, yeah. perfect. absolutely. It really Wonderful. is a delicious bite. I mean, and this mm -hmm. place doesn't have a huge menu, mm -hmm. but to me, you look at the menu and you go, well, they lean on what they do really well, and that, I mean, everybody who goes to this place, start with a Meyer lemon pizza mm -hmm. and work it your is. way out from there. Okay. The highlight for us was their fish tacos. Oh. Oh. They do a fried fish taco. And I don't usually like fish tacos because usually it's a steamed fish or a boiled fish and it's the texture, but these fried fish tacos were perfect. Mm. With a nice crust on it, the fish was flaky. They do a homemade purple corn tortilla with chipotle aioli on top that had just enough spice to it. We're going back for those. Mm. Nice. My wife ordered, she ordered a burger I knew she wasn't gonna finish it, so I knew I was gonna get some of yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> they do this double patty smash burger, really, really good, really well done on a brioche bun, and the fries were really good as well. I, my wife gave it a valiant effort, but I knew she wasn't gonna finish it. <laughs> it is a big burger. It's a big burger. It is. And you know, so many other dishes are just so good. I had the short ribs, mm -hmm. fork tender, they just fall apart in this lovely cloud of mashed potatoes. <laughs> I mean, it pairs well with a Sunday afternoon nap, I'll say so, that, it just is, <laughs> it is that good. Now, did you wash your dishes down with anything? Oh yeah. I did, I, we started with a cocktail, a corkscrew cocktail, really, really good. White port. Didn't even know that was a thing. It is a thing. Apparently. And it's fabulous. With yeah. a little fr citrus fruit inside. Mm -hmm. Just very refreshing. Right. Well, and Walter Joris, mm -hmm. who's the owner, yes. has his own winery. Absolutely. And they have cowgirl wines as well. Mm -hmm. So you're getting the Joris wines as well as the cowgirl wines. Absolutely. And even the beer. I ordered a Modelo, and it comes served on a silver tray. <laughs> I mean, when I order a beer, I expect two things, the beer and something to pour it into. And you get a silver tray. You get six Six little cubes of Gouda cheese rolled in celery salt. Oh my goodness. So you get a beer and a nosh. What about desserts? I got the lava cake. Yep. And mm -hmm. it is not an overly sweet cake, but the powdered sugar and the vanilla gelato, you know, it's the showstopper when you cut into the middle of the cake mm -hmm. and all the lava, the chocolate lava oozes yeah. out. And service, what did you think of service? Service was wonderful. We arrived waiting for our party, took us right back into the garden, got us something to drink. And I loved all the beautiful little white <laughs> serving dishes. And so sitting out in the garden among the greenery, it just felt so proper. <laughs> <laughs>
It's a beautiful. You almost wanted a, to raise your pinky. Yeah. <laughs> it, was just, it was just a beautiful environment. It just mm -hmm. felt nice. Yeah. And you're tucked out there. I mean, you feel a hundred miles from civilization yes. in the okay. best way possible. Yes. You could spend an hour there, you could spend three hours there, and you wouldn't even know it. Yeah, yeah. And I'm glad you, and people do just call it the valley. The valley. Mm -hmm. And I have a dear friend, she calls herself an original valley girl. Valley girl. And she <laughs> says, but Carmel Valley. That's right. <laughs> Let's be right. Let's exactly. be right. The right valley. Yeah, it's the right valley. Yeah. All right, if you would like to try Corkscrew Cafe, it's located on West Carmel Valley Road in Carmel Valley. And the average tab per person without drinks is around $35. I have to thank my great guests who joined us for this special edition. Peter Alter, who's partial to the Meyer Lemon Pizza at Corkscrew Cafe in Carmel Valley. Travis Elder, a lover of the mixed seafood grill at Monterey's Cafe Fina. And Kim Lemmy, who dreams of the giant cinnamon rolls at the Butter House in Seaside. Join us next time when three more guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQED and by... Graham's Port has been family owned and operated for over 200 years. Available at Vintage and FineWines.com or your local fine wine retailer. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable iFlyOAK.com. At Sutter, 224 hospitals and care centers never stop caring for 3.4 million Californians. Getting better never stops. Bravery, caring, kindness. And that's what we live by at SF Fire Credit Union. SF Fire Credit Union, rescuing you from banks. Crab House at Pier 39 is a family-owned restaurant featuring Dungeness Killer Crab, shellfish platters, and crab fried rice. Crab House serves fresh, sustainable seafood with stunning views of the San Francisco Bay. Located on Pier 39 in San Francisco, reservations at crabhouse39.com. When we took over a former restaurant and we had a massive discussion, we had to keep the one staple, which was Miss Jackie, and she serves coffee and water, and she has a smile on her face every single day. She is amazing. There's a little hill right up the street. It's called Spaghetti Hill. A lot of the Italians moved up there. But one of the coolest things I remember, on Sunday morning when you walk through that neighborhood, it smelled like spaghetti sauce. It was awesome. 